welcome back to the desk again. Today I wanted to talk about uh, first aid kits and uh, sort of as a follow-up to the Ryan and Sophie uh, video, uh, sort of just sort of how I deal with first aid kits, both at a personal level, which is this guy, and then on a, a bigger level when I'm doing like month-long trips, um, and a little bit of what I do, what what I do differently for work, and then if and when I end up on a sailboat full time or for a big chunk of time. Uh, how I think we should do sailboats in that situation, which is really not that different from how I would do it uh, on a month-long kayaking trip. Um, so I use these REI first aid kits. REI, of course, doesn't make them anymore because I like them. Uh, I just find that they're easy to work with. They open up in a really nice way so that it's easy um, to get what you need out of it. And... Um, and it, and it lays fat, so you're not fighting with the, uh, the, the case itself, right? You're going to be in a hurry anyway, which you shouldn't be. Calm down. It's not the end of the world. Um, but this is sort of, of what I do with the first aid kit. The first thing is I, I take all the stuff out of it that came with it and only put the stuff back that I know that I'm going to use. Um, and then I add some things to it. So the first thing I add, sometimes they come with gloves, but the gloves that they come with are really horrible. These are good gloves um, that I found when I was working as a paramedic. And so I have gloves pretty much everywhere. Um, these are um, uh, Halcyon Sterling Nitriles. Find a pair of gloves that you like. I like the Kimberly Clark, Kimberly Clark Sterling Nitriles as well. Um, but these are really nice. Um, I'm going to talk about all the stuff that's in here. Um, that is not in here, but we'll replace it with that. But really, the thing you're going to need the most, believe it or not, are band-aids. You need band-aids, you need um, maybe some moleskin. Eesh, if I can get it out of there. Some moleskin. And so I pack a fair amount of that stuff. Um, different size band-aids, but that's really the bulk of what you're going to use. Um, we know just from experience that the bulk of what's going on are cuts and scrapes and stuff like that. So you can see a lot of band-aids, a lot of band-aids as they explode all over my kit. Um, I also pack in a little pair of trauma shears. These will cut just about anything. They're really cheap, but they're particularly good for working um, moleskin, which is great for hikers. Um, uh, but these will cut just about anything, from small branches to clothing, um, stuff like that. This, this uh, kit comes with a little first aid book, which I think is a good idea. More band-aids. Um, which I think is a good idea. Find a book that you like. I don't know that I've ever really looked at this book, um, but it looks like it's pretty good. But find a book that you like. I also throw in extra uh, 4x4s and 3x3s and stuff like that. You give me 4x4s and some roller gauze, and I can fix just about anything that's bleeding. Um, most bleeding stops with direct pressure and elevation. Um, over 90% of bleeds can be stopped with direct pressure and elevation, and those two things work really well. I also throw in an irrigation syringe. You can improvise a lot of things in the backcountry, but you can improvise uh, an irrigation syringe. This weighs less than an ounce and costs less than a dollar and is worth every bit of that ounce. Um, instead of moleskin lately, I'm using uh, rock tape or KT tape or something like that. Um, another good reason to have the trauma shears, you can put this right over a hot spot. It's stretchy a little bit when you put it on and it's super thin. And so it rubs this instead of rubbing your skin. And I, I do like this more than moleskin. I keep that moleskin in, uh, to make a donut around a, a blister for that sort of level of treatment. Um, sometimes in my kits, I have um, uh, ace wraps. In this kit, I have Cohere Wrap, which I can use in a similar way just to cover up a wound. It's, uh, it sticks to itself. It works really well. This is a small roll, and I think a fair amount of that roll has been used already. Um, but that's, that's a really, really nice option. Um, so that is the bulk of things. Yeah, just more, more gauzy stuff, right? Um, and so that's how we deal with day-to-day. -day. And I should say... I actually have three of these kits that are just about identical, and I have one of them for in my hiking backpack, and I have one of them in um, my mountain biking backpack, and I have one of them in a waterproof dry bag, 
with a nice old Knowles Wilderness Medicine logo. Um, I don't know how long ago I got this, but it's awesome. Um, and, uh, and that goes paddling with me. And so the reason that I have three of these is so that I'm not moving them around. Oh, there's tweezers in here also, which is good for splinters and stuff like that. It's so that I'm not moving them around because invariably, if you're moving first aid kits back and forth um, from different places, you are gonna forget to grab it once, and that's gonna be the time that you need it. Um, and so this way, I, I don't have to move first aid kits around. I'm just always, um, uh, I just always know I have one. Um, but what we do have to do is twice a year, go through your first aid kit and make sure, go th twice a year, go through your first aid kit and, um, and check and make sure that things are still good. Like that probably shouldn't have come off like that, but it's still sticky, that's still okay. But uh, a lot of times the adhesives on things like this um, uh, fail over time, particularly if you live in a hot environment like I do most of the year. So go through your first aid kit at the beginning of the season, go through your, your like um, maybe April, and then go through it at the end of the season and replace all the stuff that you've, um, that you've used or that's died through the course of the hot summer hiking kayaking, paddling, whatever it is you do. Um, okay, so that's little first aid kit. We'll put this back together in a minute. This is a slightly bigger version of that same first aid kit, and I'm mostly following the same principles. Right? I still like the way that it opens. In here I've got a roller gauze. In here I've got more of these things. More gloves. Right? I also add in, in the slightly bigger ones. So like this is maybe if I'm doing a week-long trip. Um, the slightly bigger one I add in a triangular bandage. I still have that same first aid book. Um, a lot of the same stuff. This one comes with uh, the equivalent of a little soap note. Um, and that's a good thing. Just Google soap note, S-O-A-P. Um, it's a form that you use to fill out when you've treated a patient. I think this also, yeah, has a pencil in it. And a pencil is good because you can sharpen it with a knife. Um, uh, uh, it's, um, it's what you use to take notes when you're treating a patient. And then you hand it off to whoever you're handing the patient off to. Um, so, again, more roller gauze. These are for pills and stuff, which I've obviously never filled up. I generally just throw a, a pill bottle in here. Um, and then the other thing this has is a, a wound closure kit. And so this you can get online or, or build yourself. Um, and the two most important things in here are this, which are Steri strips, and this, which is a transparent semi-permeable dressing. Um, and the beauty of this is that you can see the wound underneath it um, and monitor it for signs and symptoms of infection. So this is the same sort of stuff as, um, as the other kit, um, just more of it, and then a big pair of trauma shears. Um, these are still only like five bucks. They're titanium. They're not that heavy, but they will cut just about anything. Um, really, really nice to have. Um, so that's the bigger kit. Now, for this next part, we got to go outside because... My other kits are just too big to, to blow out on the desk. So let's go outside. Welcome to the van. This is our first shoot in the van. I think a van tour is coming up. Um, these are two very big first aid kits. This one on the left is my personal kit, which goes on on big kayaking trips. Um, it's too big for a backpack, but big kayaking trips, I don't care how much anything weighs. This is my work kit, um, which my, my employer provided to me. Um, the people who work and don't do uh, paddling courses don't get the dry bag. Paddlers get the dry bag. Um, but even when I'm working land-based courses, I'm carrying this kit, which you are about to see is a monster. Um, and I can't, I don't want to open this kit. Oh, because it's supposed to be sealed, which it's not. Um, but you can see that this kit has a lot of stuff in it. It's really nicely organized. This is more than a normal human being needs. This is what I was talking about before with um, 
uh, soap notes. These are the soap notes that I get from work, which we're going to open uh, carefully here so you can't see who I work for. But that's, uh, that's a soap note. Um, and so it's a good cheat sheet if you can't remember how to treat your patient. Um, and, and a pen, which, hey, let's see if the pen still works. Hey, the pen still works, which is frequently why I use pencils, because you can sharpen a pencil with a knife and you always have a knife. So I'm not going to break out what's in here. In a work situation, it's dictated by your employer as to, as to what's in here. But you can see there's a lot of stuff in here. And uh, normally, this is sealed with a like a zip tie so that you, you don't open it if you unless you have to but a lot of times your employers will have rules or my employer has a rule if you if the zip tie is broken you have to fill out paperwork as to why you went in there um, now the other stuff that's in here is not from my employer um, this is my bag of goodies because so that a I don't have to open that if I need something simple but also just stuff that I like to work with so you can see more of that cohere app cohere app is also called coban is also called vet wrap um, q-tips um, all sorts of stuff that I like to work with roller gauze lots of four by fours more band-aids which I've talked about a lot um, eye wash which I think is really good to have so that stuff is not uh, in in this big first aid kit, I like to have it so I pack along and then um, More paperwork printed on waterproof paper because my life is forever wet and then in the very bottom I have uh, You know on the bottom where it takes the longest time to get to I have uh, epinephrine which my employer provides me um, as well as uh, uh, Benadryl diphenhydramine um, and a red bag which really, I would need a sharps container for this, so I don't know why I have a red bag, but whatever. Uh, and so, who wants the expiration on this? I don't know. Well, we'll come back to that. Check the expiration dates on your meds. So that's my work kit, um, which is a monster, and if you do this sort of stuff for a living, your life is carrying a lot of gear that you're hopefully never gonna need. Um, but let's talk about my kit, which is this guy. And so, in general, in my kit, I have um, the one of those big REI kits like the one I showed you before. At the moment, I noticed that this one has a small REI kit in it. I'm not quite sure why I did that, but that kit is going to be the same. Um, and then I'm going to use the bag to bulk up other stuff. So the first thing that I have with me that you won't see in a normal kit is a BP cuff and a, a mag light flashlight. Um, the mag light could probably be replaced by something smaller, but it's the one I used when I was a paramedic, so I have a, a, an attachment to it. Speaking of when I was a paramedic, this is my ALS field guide, which has stuff about brains and, and drugs and all sorts of stuff and what's going on with your EKG. And most of this I won't need, but I, I do really like the the drug guide aspect of this. Um, this is pretty old at this point, probably a decade. Um, you can see it's pretty worn out. Um, and so maybe I should probably update this, but they're not cheap. This is like a $45 item. Um, so that goes in there. Along with the BP cuff goes a stethoscope. Do not buy like a $15 stethoscope. Spend 50 bucks on a stethoscope. Um, there is really only one name in stethoscopes today, and it's Littman. Uh, this is the Littman Lightweight, which is like 50 bucks. Um, you can spend $500 on a Littman uh, stethoscope. You don't need to do that, unless you're a cardiologist, then you need to do that. Um, but very quickly, when I kayaked the inside passage, I got the, the flu really badly. And at some point, I had decided to not bring a stethoscope with me. And I wasn't sure if I had the flu or if it was full-blown pneumonia. Um, and with a stethoscope, you can tell that in 10 seconds, and I could teach someone else how to tell if it was pneumonia in 10 seconds. But I didn't bring it because I was worried about the weight. But we had 12 pounds of cheese per person, and I thought that was going to be too much. So that always goes in the backcountry with me. This also goes in the backcountry with me, which is a, uh, a CPR mask. Um, you should have one of these in your car also. And then Brett's requisite bag of big additional stuff. I think of this as the bloody bag. Um, 
all the sponges and gloves and stuff like that, an additional roll of tape. Another thing that's in here, which I didn't mention was in the big kit, is a triangular bandage, which is also called a cravat. These are great for slings and stuff like that. Awesome thing to have, and they cost about a dollar. Um, and then the final thing that's in here, besides the big red first aid kit, is a SAM splint. Um, you can improvise a splint with these really easily. These are, are a thin sheet of aluminum with, uh, with padding on each side. You still need to pad between this and the person, but it's super flexible until you bend it in this orientation. Right? And so it works really well for a forearm splint. You can do an, an improvised C collar with it. You can do an ankle splint with it. A lot of people don't bring these because they're um, heavy and they take up space, but I'm a big fan. If I've said it once, I've said it a million times. I'm a kayaker. I don't care how much things weigh, um, but uh, as long as I've got the space, it goes. So that's what's in the big first aid kit. Um, I also am a big fan of this book, the Knowles Wilderness Medicine book. I am a little uh, prejudiced towards this because I work for Knowles, and Todd Schemmelfinig is uh, uh, my curriculum director. He's one of the people I work for. That first aid kit is not a Knowles first aid kit. Um, uh, and so I'm a big fan of this, but, but I might be biased because I know Todd, and, and it's a great book. Ooh. Ooh. Snake. Um, so get a good book. I like this one. I think it's a good book. Um, check it out. But most importantly, take a class. Take a wilderness first aid class or the wilderness first responder course, which is 10 days, um, or the wilderness EMT course if you're a crazy person. If you're already a doctor or a nurse or something like that, you can do a course just for medical professionals. Um, and so you've got tons of options, but you really need to have that knowledge to operate in the backcountry. So that's what's in my first aid kit. Um, what would I do differently or what will I do differently when I'm on a boat for an extended period of time? Um, all of this stuff is going to be there, including the book, all of this stuff, plus um, a good selection of meds. Ask your doctor for a broad-spectrum antibiotic. Um, you hope not to need it, but you should have it. Um, if you have reason to believe you might need an EpiPen, I think that's a good thing to have. Um, um, all, all of this but more. On a boat, space is not an issue. I would probably still do the dry bag on a boat um, as opposed to like, a, you could do a tackle box or something like that, but I like the waterproofness and if, and if God forbid I have to get into a life raft, I'm going to grab that uh, and I want to make sure it stays dry. Um, so not too much different, um, but a good array of stuff and just really more of it. You don't need stitches. You're never going to be suturing someone. The problem with suturing someone in the backcountry or at sea is the risk of infection. Infection, um, and then you have to cut that stuff open to reclean the wound if it gets infected. So uh, sturdy strips and some tape and a and a roller gauze is really all you need. So no uh, sutures, no staples, no crazy glue, uh, no duct tape on wounds because you don't want the glues from duct tape getting into a wound. So that's how I handle first aid kits, and I hope you never need it. Um, but uh, but there you go. Whatever you're doing outside, be safe and have fun.